talking. I'm talking. Tips for Berkeley online students. I actually hadn't planned to make this video. What happened is I needed to review my understanding of music theory that I learned from Berkeley online classes. And my last Berkeley class was actually over three years ago. And unless you are actively using what you study, you certainly don't remember everything. And the classes that I took online at Berkeley were Music Theory 201, 301, as well as Counterpoint. And these are really awesome classes, yet none of them were easy. I had to work uh, really hard at them. And as I mentioned in another video, I skipped Theory 101, even though it would have been easier if I'd taken that. The tips I'm about to give you will help you not only to get the most out of your online course, but to benefit you in the future. And uh, if you don't follow these tips, you may regret it. But who am I to say this? Well, that's the thing. My name's John Chamley, and I'm just like many of you out there who love music. I'm not famous. I haven't played with world-level musicians. What I can say is that the lowest final grade I got in any of these Berkeley courses was A-. minus. So in the A- minus course, I actually deserved A-, minus, even though I worked like a dog to get it. The reason for the minus was because I didn't quite have the foundation to do better than I really did. By the way, don't forget to subscribe below and hit the bell if you want to hear some more from me. Compared to some students in this class that I'm speaking of, there were some seemingly much more competent musicians. You can tell because uh, in some of the classes you actually have access to MP3 files and assignments from other students and uh, you're even encouraged to comment on them. So this is one of the advantages of taking this type of course online with Berkeley. Now, I'm not getting paid for this. This is just, you know, I did have a good experience and this is just genuinely what I think. So, okay, what are the tips? Before I get into them, I want to point out three really important things to keep in mind. And I also want to tell you about something that happened to me recently. So, here are the things to remember. Number one, you're going to cover a lot of ground in your course and you may be spending possibly 10 hours a week or more to keep up with the course. At least that's what I did. And number two, after the course is finished, you will not remember everything. And uh, there may be some gray areas that uh, in what you've learned. And the third point is that all the course materials may be online and there's, there may be no book unless a professor who, who is giving the course has written publications that you can buy. However, if things are the same as they were three years ago, course material is available online, I think for about one and a half years. But once it's taken down, it's gone. So here's my little story before we go on. Right now, I haven't taken the course for a while. It's been three years since uh, I took my last Berkeley course, but there's still one course that I felt I really could benefit from. And that course is reharmonization techniques. And it's authored by Steve Roshinsky. I had wanted to take this in the past, but I just didn't have the courage. And the reason for that was that these types of courses, you need to be able to write out your concepts in standard notation and do a lot of chord analysis. And I was afraid that my uh, understanding of theory was going to be a little bit too challenged. However, I, I felt that this, uh, this time was the time to take the plunge and, uh, and just go for it. So to prepare for that, I began brushing up on my theory recently, uh, and I was ready to dive in and hit the sign up button. So getting permission. Now, I am a happily married man, blessed with uh, having three wonderful grown up kids, and the last one is now going through college. So I told my wife about the plan, and because I, I wanted to make sure that she was on board. What she said was, why do you need to take another college credit course. Take a Udemy or Skillshare or something like that. So I replied that there, there wasn't a course exactly like this. And if I take this course, I'll be able to learn the topic in a much shorter time. She responded that even though you can't find the exact same course, why do you need to spend so much money at your age? So, I mean, what a shock. Not really. Anyway, honestly, I, I could have persisted and she may have reluctantly agreed, but I decided to do a little bit more research and see what else I could find. 
What I did find was a book uh, published by Berkeley Press called Reharmonization Technique by Randy Feltz. And this seemed to cover the same ground as the online course. And for, for $30, I can study this in my own time. So here's the reason I made this video. Because to understand this book, which I received already, uh, I need to brush up on the theory that I learned from Berkeley Online. And uh, I only have a few books by Paul Schmeling, who is uh, the professor for the, uh, for the three theory courses that I took with Berkeley. Uh, and those books are available from Berkeley Press also. But they only cover the first level course. So fortunately, I did have some information from the courses that I took. So finally, here are the tips related to what I just said. Save a Word document of the entire course that you're taking. And the second one is keep all of your course templates as well as the finished and corrected assignments, the hard copies or PDFs. And the third thing is keep any notes that you kept of all your work. Now, how to make a document of the en entire course. Berkeley courses have a timed release, so you only have access to the uh, to the most current part of the course. The entire course is 12 weeks, so you have to wait 12 weeks before you can make a copy of the entire course. Now, I don't want to suggest anything that uh, would violate Berkeley's copyright laws, but some there may be some software out there that could allow you to copy a web page and all the links that you have access to. That way, you'll be able to uh, view the entire course again once, uh, you know, when you, when you need to look at it. So in my case, I just copied the complete course page after 12 weeks and I pasted it into a Word file. So at least I have um, you know, the curriculum, just the basic outline of the course. And then uh, at least with the theory courses, you'll be, you'll be given some templates that uh, you, you, know, you do your assignments. And those, those, uh, the ones I did are, are for finale. So when you finish your assignments, you'll be able to look at those and hear them too. So sometimes you may resubmit your course several times with uh, some advice on how to correct it. Then you get a final copy that you know is correct and has been, uh, has been checked over by the professor. So what I've said may seem obvious, but uh, I have made the mistake in the past of, of not doing this, which is why I, I wanted to do this today, because I was able to go to my material and I was very grateful that I'd done this and I put everything into, into a folder. So of course, the best thing is if you, you have everything in your head, but uh, in any field of study, uh, we don't always use everything that we learn. Like they say, use it or lose it. But if you keep good records, you may be able to get back what you lost. And uh, I hope this simple idea has been useful and worth the time that you spent watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button if you like this. And I wish you luck in your musical journey. And as always, I like to say, stay tuned and look forward to seeing you soon.